Hey guys, welcome back to new video on the channel. Now this is a bit different from what you normally see now. I've got the camera over there. Let me explain, two main reasons. Number one, I'm upgrading my lens, so I don't really have any good lenses that are wide enough right now because DPD have lost them and they're absolute nightmare. So I'm going to get my new lens next week, so back to normal next week. And second of all, this isn't going to be like a videography or a video edit. Well, it is going to be a video editing uh, tutorial, but this one, I'm, I'm quite excited to do this because um, a lot of people have been requesting it. It's going to be my ultimate, like, ultimate guide. It's going to be quite a lengthy video. I'm going to leave timestamps in the description below and you might see them on the timeline here for your viewing pleasure. But this is like the ultimate, the, 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 the ultimate um, Premiere Pro guide to video editing. Now, whether this be like, you might think like, who the hell is this guy? No, my name's Jack. I've had three, maybe four, possibly three, four years experience being a videographer, being a video editor, and actually doing stuff in the industry, whether that be like music videos, live events, uh, club videos that I've recently getting into, you know, all of this has given me the experience that, you know, I can now give to you guys, so um, this is just going to be a big compilation of all the videos I've done from like when I first started the channel, like over a year ago now, it's crazy, um, and the videos that I've been doing recently, but I'm going to stop waffling, um, if you guys like what you see here, subscribe to the channel for more videography and video editing tips. Um, and if you want to support the channel and the creation of me content, hopefully better content than, than this when I actually get my new lens, um, go buy me a coffee, link in the description. Apart from that, I'll stop my waffling and uh, you can learn the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro for your first client or you know, whatever it is you're learning. But this is the ultimate guide. Right, wait, no, I did that wrong. I'm proud to present Jack Burnley's ultimate, ultimate guide to video editing and Adobe Premiere Pro for basics, learning of the basics. So I'll shut up and let's go. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video on the channel. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Premiere Pro. What do you need to do to understand the basic and fundamentals of Premiere Pro? So let's jump straight into it. So when you first launch Premiere Pro, you'll be greeted by this window. What we want to do here is to click New Project. I'll be greeted by this window. I'm just going to name it Test. And then Location, you're going to choose where you're going to save it. And you're going to save it in my downloads. And then the other settings aren't really that important. So let's just click OK. And then Premiere Pro will launch into this menu. Now you're probably wondering, what on earth are these menus? Do not worry. We're going to sign the bottom left. In the bottom left hand corner of Premiere Pro, this is your input window where you drag and drop all of your footage into Premiere Pro. Now one tip, I recommend sorting through your footage and naming it. What you can do, you can click this little icon here, new bin. Now what a bin is, is Premiere Pro's folder and bins are going to allow you to organize all of your footage. So rename them to whatever you want, like outside shots, inside shots, shots of DJ, shots of people, B-roll, anything that works for you. So that's just a quick little tip. And if you want to delete anything in Premiere Pro, select it and hit the back key. So there's two ways you can import your footage. The fast way of just opening up your file explorer and dragging and dropping your footage into it. And what it's going to do is it's going to import all of your files and then you can double click here, scrub through, do whatever you want. So once you have your footage in Premiere Pro, you can start organizing, and once you've organized it all, you can double click it, and it's gonna bring up this preview menu. Now what the hell's a preview menu? A preview of your footage that you can scrub through and select which parts of the video you want to include. So let's say I want to include this part where I come into the screen. What you can do, you can hit I on the keyboard, and then O to select in and out points, so just select that part of the video. So what that's done is it's created these little brackets and anything inside those brackets is what's going to be used and pulled out when you drag it onto your timeline. Now you're probably wondering what are these two little icons here? These are so you can just drag the video only or the audio only. Now what that's going to do is going to do as it says. You're just going to drag the audio or you can just drag the video. But if you want both, drag the actual video, hold and click and then drag it onto your timeline. So once you've got your footage onto your timeline, you're probably wondering what the hell's a timeline? A timeline is where you edit your footage. And if you want to do some basic cuts, what you do, you hit C on the keyboard, or go over here and click this little razor tool, C. And this is what this is going to allow you to do is, it's going to allow you to cut certain parts of your video. So if you want to make, just do some top and tail in trimming, and you're going to get rid of the intro and outro on a video, you just cut the video. But if you've made a mistake, 
What you can do is hold Control and Z. That's going to undo the actions you just did. So if you dragged in your footage and it's looking a bit weird like this, it's kind of zoomed in a little bit. What you want to do, you want to click on your video up to the preview tab and hit effect controls. Now what this is going to do, it's going to bring up the effect controls where you can manipulate your footage. So the stuff we're interested in is motion. What you can do, you can click motion. What that's going to do, it's going to bring up this little box, this little blue box that you can use to move around your audio. But if you don't want to do that, one thing you can do is hold down scale and drag to the left or right to drag it in and out, zoom in and out. If you can't pr precisely get it on, what you can do, you can double you can double click it and then type in the value you want. So once you've topped and tell your footage and done all the basic editing you want to do, what you can do, you can hit Control M on the keyboard and it's going to bring up your export settings. Now the things that we want to do is to go to Format and then choose H.264 and that's the format we want to export in. And then preset my source high bitrate, that's going to export in high quality. Output name, this is where you can save it and rename it to whatever you want to do. And then just hit save, and then that's the chosen location of where it's going to save and export to. Make sure that video export video and export audio are selected so you'd have both of them together. And then the other settings we want to mess around with is under video, and then you scroll the way down, you want to hit render maximum depth and use maximum render quality. What that's going to do is going to render at the maximum quality it can possibly do. And then once you're done with all of that, what you're going to do is just hit export and it'll begin exporting your video. And once that's nearly done, the export menu will disappear and then you're like, well where's my footage? We'll go to the location where you saved it and that for me is here. We can double click here and we can, we can see that, oh, it's exported my video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you what sequence settings are in Premiere Pro. Now this is a very fundamental skill when setting up Premiere Pro to edit a project. Because what a sequence is, it's all of your aspect ratios, your frame rate, all of that good stuff that makes up your video. So if you get this wrong, your video is going to look off and it's going to look weird. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is drag in your footage like normal. And then what you want to do is you want to come up to File, New, and then Sequence. And then what that's going to do is going to open up the Sequence window. And once the sequence window is open, and then what you want to do is come over to settings, and we're going to create our own custom preset, so you don't have to create, keep creating one every time you launch Premiere Pro and start new projects. So editing mode, make that custom. Frame rate is whatever you shot it. So for me, I shot my video in 60 frames per second, so I'm going to click 60 frames per second. Frame size, now this is important. So whatever aspect ratio you want to go with is what your frame size is going to be. For me, I want to use the standard 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to put 1920 by 1080, that's already in, all good. Uh, pixel aspect ratio, put that square pixels. This might be selected, one of these might be selected. Make sure square pixels is selected. And then the rest of the settings don't really matter. And then save preset. Name, I'm just going to name that test, and then uh, whatever you want to name the description as. Okay, and that's going to load up your sequence presets again, and once it finally loads, at the bottom here, you're going to have your custom ones, and then I'm going to have all of your, your, your presets, and what you want to do, you want to just double click it, and it's going to create a new sequence on your timeline, ready for you to drag in your footage and edit. But you're probably wondering, you sure there's got to be a faster way to do this? Yes, there is. If you don't want to do that file, new, sequence, and mess about with all of that, what you can do is you want to come to new item, click black video, and what that's going to do, that's going to open up the same settings, but the important ones. So you want that same thing, aspect ratio, 90 by 1080, uh, frame rate, for me, 60 FPS, Pixels, always square pixels, click OK, and that's going to create the new item, the new black video. And then literally all you do is just drag it onto your timeline. Now how fast is that compared to the, the other way? So that's just a quick little way on how to create your sequence settings. So once you're ready, you can just delete the black video, nobody needs that one, it's got time for that. You can just drag it into Premiere Pro, now that window's going to come up. Click mismatch warning, That there's, there's something in your footage that's different to what your sequence settings is. It might be your frame rate, your aspect ratio, whatever it is, you want to click a keep existing settings. And that's going to keep the existing sequence settings that you just set up. Because if you select change sequence settings, the sequence and the timeline is going to match the, the settings of the footage, which we don't want to do. We want to create our own 
sequence settings. So when you're dragging your footage, make sure you select keep existing settings. That's going to create the that's going to keep the existing settings that you just set up with your black video. So maybe you just edited something and you let Premiere Pro set up your sequence settings automatically and maybe your footage is looking something like this. It isn't fully within the parameters and it's like this little box within this bigger black box. What you want to do is select, select your footage and then come up to the top left, it'll be on this, select effect controls, make sure you've got your video selected and then what we want to do here is focus on the scale drag your scale to the right and then you can enlarge it, you can make it smaller, do whatever you want to do. For me it was about it was at 100, so you can type in 100. There we go. Job done. And then once you've done you can hit Control M and then export like that. Sequence settings. Sequence settings are very very important. You have to create them before you start editing your project otherwise Premiere Pro is going to create an auto one and it's not going to be that good. Hey guys welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over how to actually cut a clip in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now this is the basic basic tool in well first thing you practically learn in Adobe Premiere Pro in the description. So jumping straight to this. How do you actually cut a clip in Adobe Premiere Pro? For the fast way, all you do is hit C and it's going to bring up this little eraser tool and then you can zoom in to the video and then say you want to cut it about there and you want to cut it there. That's all you do to get the cut, to get the razor tool, the snippet tool to trim the video. And if you want to, if you don't want to use V on the keyboard for whatever reason, you can come over to the left hand side or the middle part, depending on what your loadout is in a, in a Premiere Pro, you come over to this razor tool right here, click that, and then it's going to switch to the razor tool, and you can cut wherever you want. You can cut all of this. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over organising your clips in Adobe Premiere Pro with bins, so stay tuned. So once we're inside Premiere Pro, I've got a project going right now, my short film, so what we want to do is create, go over to uh, the import window and as you can see down here we've got this little folder, it's create new bin, so we're going to click create new bin and we're just going to call this back street, okay, okay, and then go down, open it and then once you're in there, what you want to do, open up your files, hit control A, select them all and literally just drag them in and it's as simple as that, let Premiere Pro import them all and then do that for every single scene that you've got or I don't know how you're going to organise your folders, but that's literally all you do. So as you can see, I've got a date scene, I've got a back street, uh, darkroom scenes, forest, and an opening. They're all of my scenes, and I've got in each of these, I've got all of my clips for um, the corresponding scenes. And I've got that in Premiere Pro. But a little quick tip, if you don't want to create a new bin and have the hassle of dragging them in, if you've already sorted it out, if you've already organised your folders and your files, you can literally just drag them all and then import them like that and Premiere Pro will create these, these little folders will try, will convert into bins in Premiere Pro and then you've got all of your files sorted and you can drag them on and edit them and yada yada yada. So that's just a little quick video guys on how to organise your files. Um, a little way I like to do it as well is I like to organise into separate so I've got my raw clips, my main raw clips and then that I'll have subfolders so my darkroom scenes, my opening, my back street but then I've also got my sound effects, all my sound effects, and then I've got my background music that I'm going to use, if I'm going to use any, I'll have my visual effects, and then stuff like that, you know, just different folders so you can organise this so you know where it is, instead of just going in, dragging all your clips and dragging it in into um, the input window without any bins, without any organisation, and it's just going to be a pain in the ass to try to figure out and go through your clips. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over how to do in and out points in Adobe Premiere Pro, so stay tuned. So once you've got your clip in Adobe Premiere Pro, what you want to do is come over to the in and out points, wherever you want to do it, say you want to do it here, it can be anywhere. And all you're going to click is O for out, O for out, and then I for in. Do it back here. And then this part is going to be rendered or exported or whatever you're going to do. So what you can do, cut the sequence, render into out or if you go to export it it will just export this part so make sure that you've got the entire clip selected as a bit of a, a faster way if, you, if, you've only, if you've only got one clip and it's not being caught one thing that you can do is hit X and that's going to select that entire clip that your cursor is over so if a cursor was over so let's, let's duplicate this if the, my cursor was over this one and I wanted to select all of this I would have to go all the way over and then hit O and then come all the way and hit I 
But if I wanted to just select this, I'd hit X and it's going to cut off this. And there's a little bit of a side note, the way I'm jumping to the edges of the actual timeline by using up and down arrows and that's going to allow me to go quickly from side to side in the Premiere Pro and then just I and then Control M and then we're ready to export and we can uh, export our video. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Now today we're going to go over export settings with Adobe Premiere Pro, so stay tuned. Once we're in, I've got my footage here from a short film that I'm working on, it's looking pretty good. So say I want to export this, set our in and out points. Hit Control M and it's going to bring up the export menu. Control M on the keyboard, I don't know what it is for Max, I think you just change the control to like alt or something like that. So once we're here, format. If you're doing video, always leave it H.264. This is the video setting. So if you're exporting video, put in H.264. And if you're doing a, uh, a, a PA, uh, MP3, just click MP3, and then you're ready. So you can literally just hit export then. But with H.264, it's a little bit more complicated. So hit H.264. Make sure you can change the name here to change it to anything. We're not going to do that. And make sure the tick export video and export audio if you're exporting the entire thing. Now video, this is where I want to um, pay attention. Hit render maximum depth so we get that quality and use maximum render quality so we're really getting the full, uh, full amount, amount of it. Hardware encoding, leave it at that. Um, pretty simple. VBR1 pass, leave it at that. I don't know what the other one is, I just leave it at that one. Target bit right, never go below 10. If you go below 10, I mean, you could go below 10, but then it really shrinks down file size. But just leave it around 10 to 20, is what I do. And apart from that, we're ready to export. So H.264, make sure these two are selected. Make sure it's a random and maximum depth, maximum render quality, export. And then once you've done, a little menu will pop up uh, rendering the audio and then export the actual video itself. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over how to export an MP3 in Adobe Premiere Pro. So once we're in Adobe Premiere Pro and say you've done your edit and you're ready to export, this is my last video, go check it out there. Um, shameless plug. So what we do there, export it in and out points, check that video up there as well. Uh, what we're going to do here, we, all we want to do is change the format. Now the format is very key. You go down to the drop down menu, or it's going to be H.264. Check out the video up there, show how to export it. And then what we want to come down is to MP3 here, and then literally it's going to get rid of all the, the video tab, and then audio, I just leave it as it is. I name it, da -da 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 -da. and then export. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to be going over how to mute a certain track in Adobe Premiere Pro, both for visuals and audio. Let's jump straight into it. So once you're inside De Prom uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got your project open, what you want to do is come down to your uh, timeline and then to the left hand side of your timeline you're going to see these eyeballs. Toggle track output. If you click that, a certain um, layer is going to disappear. Let's get rid of the bottom one. There we go, as you can see, as I click these, certain things are disappearing because of different layers. So if I get rid of both of them, we've lost both of the visuals. Same thing here, if I go over to here, and I want to get rid of this, uh, depending on what track it is, if I get, click the eyeball, disappeared. Quite simple, same thing with the mute. If I go over to here, let's say, and I come down to here and I hit this little M, see it's in line with the eyeballs, I'm going to hit M, mute track, and that's mute, and when I play this, it's not actually going to have the actual sound on it. As a bit of a clear example, if I mute my actual uh, master track, I'm going to mute that, and you can't hear that anymore because it's muted. But if I, then it's going to play. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I'm going to go over the basics of changing the volume of different clips within Adobe Premiere Pro. Now this can be useful for anything, changing or keyframing certain points within the audio, or for music, or wherever it is, whether you want it to fade in, fade out, or just go lower in general. I'm going to show you how to do that today in Adobe Premiere Pro, so stick around till the end. So once you've got your clip in the timeline, there's two ways to go about this. First way is by selecting your clip, double clicking the clip, and then going over to the source panel in the top left hand corner, clicking on audio mixer, and then here we can adjust, we can bring it up, or we can bring it down. And then 0, 0, .0 is the basis, you want to keep it up, you don't want to go too above or you don't want to go too uh, far below that, otherwise you can't hear it or it will be too loud. So what I would like to do is keep it around, if, I'm gonna, if it's going to be background music, I like to keep it around 
12, 10 to about 12, that's a good amount for background music. The second way to do this is by coming back over to your timeline and double clicking this little like panel here. And this little channel here, whatever channel it is, if you in between the, the, the clip and this voiceover record button, if you double click, it'll extend or bring up the, the panel. Now there's another way to do this, if you just drag it down, you can do that, but I like to keep it nice and neat and just double click it, it's quicker and faster. And as you'll see, this the, the there's a line that appears on the audio track, so if we zoom in, this is what we're doing up here. We can change the amount of how loud or how quiet it is, same, same uh, values and stuff like that. So this is just how to make it a clip loud or a clip quieter. But if you want to have a fade in fade out, there's a little trick that I'm going to teach you later on. But if you want to do that, what you do, select your clip and then bring your arrowhead over here. Bring your arrowhead to wherever you want your clip to start or go up or go down or whatever it is. Select the, it's going to create a little keyframe. Click the little keyframe here, move up just a little bit and then hit another keyframe and bring it down or bring it up. If you want your track to go higher or lower or louder or if you want your track to go high, if you want your audio to go louder or quieter, drag it, drag it up or drag it down, depending on what you want to do. For me, I want it to dip probably about here for a couple of seconds and then go back up. So I'm going to do create a keyframe here and a keyframe there and that's going to create the same value there and then it's going to track in like an anchor point and it's going to go drag it down, keep the same value and it's going to stay here. Quietens out. I'm Ash and I am Keeps back. going. You get the idea. And if we want to bring it back up, say we want to bring it back up when this person starts talking. I'm going to click at the add keyframe again and it's going to create a keyframe on the same level that the previous one was at. So we're going to go up just a little bit and create another keyframe. We're going to drag it back up to zero. And there we go. We've got a little fade in, fade out transition. And you can mess around with the, how close they are and how far apart they are depending on what you're trying to do. So for me, I kind of like to keep it around this distance. It's not too short, not too long. It'll gradually increase. Maybe you want to do a cinematic introduction where the music starts to fade in slowly. What you would do, you drag the audio, the keyframe I mean, all the way up here. And then as it goes on, it gradually gets bigger, uh, louder I mean. And then if you want it to be, again, you want it to be like that, closer together. Faster acceleration. But there's a little trick to this. If you just get rid of all of these keyframes really quick, and you, you, you're not messing around, you want it at the start or the end of your clip, what you can do, you can hit Control Shift D, and what that's going to do is going to create this little, this consistent power. And what this is basically is, is a fade out or fade in to our to our clip. So as we can see, this is the standard one. Like I did cross dissolve, you can check out my transitions video there. That goes over the basics of transitions and cross dissolve and little tricks of that. So it's just a little fade out, just a little quick fade out. Maybe you, you struck the time and you want to do a quick little fade out. You can hit Control Shift D and it's going to create this consistent power and it's going to do a quick fade in fade out. What we can do here, we can also drag how fast or how slow it fades out. So if we want it to last longer, we're going to drag it all the way out here. And then over time, over this, it's going to last longer. And it's going to slowly fade out. But if we want it to be fast, like I already said, we're going to drag it all the way close up to about, depending on how much we want, probably about here. And it's going to be a quick fade out. Same, same volume. Zoom. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over how to actually separate the audio from the visuals in Adobe Premiere Pro, so stay tuned. So once you have your clip on the timeline, all you have to do is right click and then come up to where it says unlink and then that's going to unlink your audio from your visuals. That's as simple as it is, it's so simple. And now we've got your little audio and you can do whatever you want with it. Just be careful that it's not synced up, that you're going to have to manually sync it back up together. But Apart from that, that's how you separate the audios and the visuals. Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to record a voiceover in Adobe Premiere Pro. Once you're in Adobe Premiere Pro, you want to have your timeline open. And what you want to do is pay attention to these bottom, the, the audio tracks. And depending on which one you want to do your audio on, like as you can see, I'm editing my short film, I've got multiple audio tracks. I've got my main one, then I've got like my sound effects one, I've got my, my background music and that sort of stuff. So, 
Whichever one you want to do your voiceover on is the one you're going to select. So over here on the left, you see these little microphones, and that's how you're going to record your um, your your voiceover. So as so you click that, Premiere Pro will count down three, two, one, and it'll start to play thing. And as you can see, the t the arrow is moving ahead. And if we hit stop, it's going to generate that that audio file or whatever it is and then you can mess around with it, edit it, do whatever you want to do. So that's pretty simple. All you need is a microphone in Adobe Premiere Pro. And you just hit literally, hit this little voiceover record button, it's a little microphone, and the Premiere Pro is going to count down and then you're going to say whatever you want to say. But one thing to bear in mind is that this is in real time, so whatever you say will be on that video at that correct time. So if you don't know what you're talking about, I would suggest doing it in Audacity and then editing it out and then recalibrating it for Adobe Premiere Pro but this is just a quick little method if you don't if you have, don't have the time or you don't want the hassle this is a quick solution to do that. Apart from that that's how to do a voice recording in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hey guys welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I'm going to go over how to add text to your video. Now you see my see this in a couple of music videos, short films, whatever it is I'm going to show you how to add the basic text to a video in Adobe Premiere Pro so stay tuned. As we see here I have my own little project open and this is the previous video that I did, so you can check it out up there, shameless plug. So as we see here, we've got my lovely face. And if we come down to the bottom left hand corner of the timeline, we're going to see that there's this little T. Click this and it's going to type, and it's going to say type tool. Or as, a, or as a shortcut, you can hit T. If we go back to this and we hit T, it automatically goes to it. If we hover over the preview panel, we can click anywhere and it's going to create a little box down here and this is going to be our um, our text box so let's just type Jack is awesome and which I am so what we're going to do we're going to we can we can then we can do anything with this we can resize it, we can make it big so we can big bold and we can also rearrange this on the timeline so if we want say we wanted to start at three minutes round and about three minutes round about there and we wanted to start from about 2.45, go to it, let me just get that on, you go to it, it'll come on for that amount of time. There you go, and it's gonna go away soon. Right, three minutes, there you go. And that's how you can do it. And if you want to edit the, the actual text and resize it and re get the gap between them, what you wanna come and do is come up to the top left hand corner up here where it says effect controls. Make sure you've got the text, the actual text box on the timeline selected. Come up to effect controls and come down to where it says text and hit this little arrow and expand the um, the panel. And then as we can see here, if we hit the T, T, T again and get all of and select all of it and come down to the font, we can change the font to whatever we want. Now, what I, what I do, as you probably tell from my channel, is I use Big Noodle Titling. And that, you might see that before, but it'll be on the thumbnail. Big Noodle Titling. And that's just the way to change the font. You can also change the size of the font as well. What size you want it to be. If you want it to be really small, if you want it to be really big. Whatever you want to do, you can do it here. And you can also change the space in between that VA. That's going to create gaps in between your letters. So if you want to really like a cinematic opening really far away or if you want it to be really really cramped like that depending on what you want to do. Hey guys welcome back to the new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over how to send to text in Adobe Premiere Pro so stay tuned to it. How do we actually send to text in Adobe Premiere Pro? So simple. All we got to do is obviously have our clip on the timeline and then have our text say Jack is awesome which I am. So, <laughs> and then we, what we want to do is come up and select our selection tool, select it, make sure our clip is selected in the bottom right, uh, and the, make sure we selected the actual clip, the actual text clip on the timeline, and then say you're in editing or something like that, you might have changed your, your loadout. Come up to graphics in the top bar, and then what all we're going to do is go from browse to edit. And then what it's going to do is bring up this, this text channel where we can edit our text even further, but what we're looking for is the positioning, the align and transform tool and now it's these two little ones here so if we move the text down to the bottom left and we want the text perfectly centered in the center of the uh, of the frame all we can do is hit the horizontal center, it's going to center it horizontally as you see there 
and then we can hit the vertical sensor it's going to center it vertically and then there all we've done is centered the text correctly in the center of the timeline in the center of the frame so what else you can do if you like for instance increase the actual where is it there it is increase the actual size of the text and it blows it up like that and it's like oh my god it's gone rid of the center don't worry you can come back with your deselected and reselect it if you select the actual make sure you've actually selected the stuff that you want to center come down to where it says vertical and horizontal and obviously because the text is too big it's gone off the screen but it's centered it like that but make sure that your your text is relatively small so it can fit on the screen like that and then there you go that's all you can do that's all you have to do to center the text now this can be used in any particular pieces of work i used it in my work for the opening video for the national diversity words that was shown in, the, in front of 600 people in the liverpool grand cathedral and it really made it look like a real nice cinematic opening because if the text was just wonky and all over the place like this and say the text was really 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 small and it wasn't centered and it wasn't professional it would have looked really weird and you wouldn't have used it but with this method i can easily center the text and make it look pretty good so and what you can do also is actually select a little fade on it use control b on the command uh, on, the, on the keyboard to get the commands up and then you can just have a nice quick little smooth um fade in fade out Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over how to stabilise shaky footage. Say you've gone out for a shoot or something, no matter what it might be, and you've come back and reviewed your footage and it's all shaky. So I'll jump straight into it. This the first method on how to... Well, the, the, we've got, kind of got two methods, but this one's a little bit more... The, the primary one that's going to save you a lot of time. So the first method is go and reshoot. Like this method, the next method is really good, but it's also a pain in my ass as well because it stabilizes footage, but it can also make your footage look really weird and it's not really salvageable, depending on how shaky it is. But when I was out doing my short film uh, Stalker, we had to go on some reshoots because of shaky footage and something sitting line up. But trust me, guys, if you're able to go and reshoot, reshoot because it saves you a lot of headaches in post production editing and trying to like, oh my god, we can't go reshoot no matter what if it's a climb if it's a YouTube video it's got to go out your deadlines coming up for whatever it is reshooting really saves you a lot of time and headaches in post-production so if you can sort it out and reshoot it go and reshoot it because it, you know it, it just saves you a lot of time so jumping straight into this on Premiere Pro say you can't reshoot and you've got to have this done and kind of get with it if it depends on how shaky it is um, is going to be kind of lower your chances of being able to salvage it. So let's jump straight to the show you me. So we've got a little footage here of me walking around my house featuring my goats and chickens. So as we can see here, this footage is shaky as shit because say you're holding your camera in your hand or something, it's going to be shaky. I mean, now some people like that, some people don't it's for aesthetic purposes and part of the music video or the video, no matter what it is. But if you wanted to get it, uh, stable we're gonna go we're gonna come over to effects in the top panel and once it's loaded we're gonna search we're gonna search warp and what we're looking for is warp stabilizer right here and what we're gonna do we literally drag it onto our clip and it's gonna analyze in the background now I'll leave it doing that while it's doing that I'm gonna explain what it's gonna do sometimes it can depend on how shaky your footage is it can make it really warpy so it's just like really distorted jammy nasty footage and it's unsalvageable but sometimes it can really make your your your, your footage like a tripod or gimbal movement that's my favorite type of movement the smooth buttery smooth um, footage okay guys so it's done stabilizing and you can see it's done quite a lot to our footage now depending on what, what it does is it crops it and zooms in and messes around with the um, where is it the scale and position to try and make your footage really smooth now what we can do, we can come over to where, we can reduce the smooth, actually wait no, let's have a look at the footage first. It's kind of smooth but it's not at the same time, this is why I like this method and it really does and I really don't, because it um, messes around with it. So as you can see here, it's stabilised crop and auto scale, but we, if we change it to stabilise only, it's going to look pretty bloody weird like that as you can see. Because Premiere Pro is trying to stabilise, mess around with all these settings up here. 
to stabilize your footage. That's why I said in the first, the first best way is to go out and reshoot. So if we go to stabilize and crop, yeah, there you go, you know, it's not the best, but you know, you do with what you can. I mean, it's kind of smooth there, you know, there's not a lot of movement. But one thing that you can do, guys, if you don't like this black bar that I kind of really don't, it looks like a bloody mailbox. One thing that you can do is reduce the smoothness. And what that's going to do is going to reduce the amount of cropping it's going to have to do because it's not trying to smooth it out as much. So if we go down from 50% down to, say, 10%, I guarantee that these black bars, this nasty mailbox, will be gone. So it's the stabilizer, I'm not, I haven't seen that. Yeah, there you go. So look, it's it's not as smooth and it's still got a bit of warp and stuff, but the black bars are gone and it stabilized it to some degree. You know, this method isn't the best, but this is what we're dealing with. So this has just been a quick little method on how to actually stabilize your footage. In some parts, it will look really, really weird. Like this, like it's really shaky. It'll be really, like here, it's really smooth a little bit, but then it'll be really wonky and stuff because it's, it's like an AI trying to fix manual footage. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we're going to go over how to slow-mo a clip or slow a video down inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, so stay tuned. We've got my clip here, my sexy face. So first of all, you need to drag your clip onto the timeline and then literally all you do is right click, come up to speed slash duration, and then as you see here, speed is currently at 100%. What we're going to do, we're going to go that and hit 50. Hit enter, and as you see, the clip doubled in length. <laughs> and it doesn't sound pretty good, but let me just turn it down, hang on. Laggy. As you see, I shoot all my YouTube videos in 60 frames per second. And this right here is a nice fluid motion of me doing this. That's literally all you do, guys. There is another method on how you can kind of make see 30 frames per second fluid, but that's a little bit more difficult. I'll do another video on that in the future. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video on the channel. Today I'm going to show you what an adjustment layer is. Now, what's an adjustment layer? An adjustment layer is something that affects the layers below it, everything that's below it. So, what's an example of this? If you want to color grade a lot of clips, but you don't want to copy and paste the same values over and over and over into the same clip over and over again for like 50 clips let's say what you can do you can you can add an adjustment layer above them all and that and you can color grade that adjustment layer or add specific effects onto that adjustment layer and it will apply that effects and that color grade to the rest of the clips that is beneath it so let me show you what i mean so first things first what you want to do you want to navigate over to the bottom left hand corner of the input window click new item adjustment layer click ok and then drag it onto your timeline and then put it above your clips and then it doesn't look like it's done anything to the clips right now so what we're going to do we're going to go to effects and what i want to do for this this is a music video i want to put some black cinematic bars on it so what we're going to do we're going to search crop and drag crop onto that it still hasn't done anything that's because we haven't edited it so in order to get it to work what we want to do we want to change the value so i want it to be 10 at the top and then 10 at the bottom and there we go we've added the effect and it's affected all of the clips that are beneath it so if we move the adjustment layer just a bit further back the effect disappears because it is no longer neat no longer underneath the adjustment layer whereas if we were to drag this adjustment layer to the very end it will affect all of it now this can be said for um, the colors as well if we want to color grade it so for this i want to go for like a colder dark theme very cold, let's use an extreme example, there we go. All the clips are cold as you can see, a nice bluey colour. But if we were to quickly go over the adjustment layer, and it's no longer above the clips, it's no longer there. And this adjustment layer affects everything that's beneath it, which means it doesn't have a limit. If your adjustment layer is on, tra uh, on track 7, it would affect all the tracks beneath it. So it really does not matter where you place your adjustment layer, as long as it is above your clips. There we go, look at that, it's crazy. I mean, the kind of colour grading, colour correction that you can do, even as a beginner, is just so mad. Like, take this image, just take these two images, for example, it's so much more moody and dramatic. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I'm going to show you the basics of colour grading and colour correction within a Premiere Pro. So the first thing you want to do is identify what kind of feeling or emotion do you want to invoke 
when colour grading is correct in this clip because depending on that answer, it's going to alter how you colour grade and correct. So my first tip is what kind of mood do you want to get across to your audience because depending on that answer, that will change what kind of colours you go with when you colour correct and colour grade in your image. Identify what kind of feeling you or mood you want to invoke and then that will change the final outcome of your image. So for me, this is a grime video and grime videos are more all that gangster kind of giving it all that. And as you can see here from my good friend AJ, he's performing and what we're going to do, to take this clip to the next level, what we want to do is go over to a colour on here and then it opens up this uh, big fancy menu. So we're, go we're just going to stick to the basic correction for now. So the first thing that I want you to look at is the temperature. The temperature is related to the other point that I just made of what kind of feeling do you want to evoke. So for us colour grading this, we want a more bluey, desaturated kind of thing because that's what grind videos are. So we're just going to drag this slider to the left. Now depending on how far you go, it'll invoke more of a powerful message. So I kind of want it about halfway maybe because I think obviously to the left is far too much. So about maybe halfway, we're going to type in the value minus 50, see how that looks. That's better. Now if, if we click this little effects button in the top right hand corner, you can see how much of a difference that has made already. Like it's just crazy how much colour grading and colour correcting can do to your image. So if we go back to that, we have our first foot in the door of the kind of temperature that we want our clip to have. So that's my first tip, mess with the temperature and understand what kind of feeling you or mood you want to invoke to your audience. So my second one is a bit further down, the tones. Now we're going to be messing around with all of these little sliders here. So depending on the exposure, if it's a more moody scene, you want the exposure to be a little bit down to invoke that like, a moody feeling, I don't know how else to put it, but for us we're going to bring it down just a tad, just a tad to about about there, not 0.5. Contrast, I don't really mess with contrast, you can just leave it at zero, God. <laughs> just leave it at zero. Highlights, we want to, again, this goes back to the previous thing, what kind of mood, we're going to drain out most of the highlights to probably about, yeah, halfway again. Shadows, bring it down moody, there we go. Whites, bring it just a tad down. Blacks, don't want it too dark, so probably about 15, there we go. I just look at that effect, that's just crazy. This is the basics. Imagine what you can do when you get proper good at this. So, <laughs> as you can probably tell, I love colour grading, colour correct. It's so therapeutic and calming, so just look at that. It's crazy how much of a mood the, the colour grading and colour correcting can get, give you. So that's my, my second tip. Mess around with these sliders and understand from the get-go what kind of mood you want to give to your audience because that is going to show the audience it's going to have a completely different message if you were to go with a more happier tone with a more warmer happier tone you know give it in all this it doesn't really fit the message and the on the theme of the video because video editing is all about story and color correcting adds to that story so make sure you're in line with the kind of story theme that you want your video to be going with and now my third tip is with the filters so if we come down if we close our basic correction we come down to creative we can click these look and now these are presets that have, uh, Adobe have given us we can import our own and uh, looks and stuff like that so that's a bit advanced so we're going to stick to the basics the one that I like to use is Fuji 3510 and that's going to give us that kind of cinematic feeling so if we bring down the intensity we can bring the the intensity of it down but if we like that that's just unrealistic so if we bring it down to probably about maybe 30 to 40 and if we uncheck the little boxes here on the right we can turn off the filter and just look at that, that has so much more depth to our image already. So probably about leave it 45, again you can mess around with different different kind of ones. Like just mess around with the ones you like, but my personal favourite is Fuji 3510 and it gives that more that cinematic feeling when uh, editing and colour grading and colour correcting your videos. And one more tip for any kind of video that you're shooting when colour grading and colour correcting is the black bars. Now I think the black bars really adds to the colour correction and colour grading to the inner image. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to effects and we're going to look up the, the effects crop. And what crop's going to do is obviously crop the, the image. So drag it onto your clip and then over here click on the, uh, the clip 
come over to the left and go down to crop. What we're gonna do, I like to have it about 10% because anything between 10% and upwards, like say 15, kind of chops out a good portion of the image. So I would say about eight to 10 is a good fit, depending on what kind of video you're doing. So a, there we go. Look at that, it's crazy. I mean, the kind of color grading, color correction that you can do, even as a beginner, is just so mad. Like, take this image, just take these two images. For example, it's so much more moody and dramatic. Like, this is a grind video, as I said, and grind videos are really moody and giving it all this and intense. This is reflected in the colour grading and colour correction. Hey guys, welcome back to the new video on the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to scale a video from small or too big to the correct perfect size. Now this goes into the aspect ratio video I did, check that out there. Other than that, stay tuned. So if you're in Premiere Pro and you've got something like this, is that you've got these little boxes around the side. What you can do, it won't work for me because I've scaled it down customatically, but if it's automatic, what you can do, right click, and then come down to where it says scale to frame size or set to frame size. Both of these things do the same thing. So click that and then it will scale it to the correct size. But for me, I've just got to click here. Or what else you could do, if that doesn't work, you can cut, you can click the clip, go over to the top left hand corner and go to effect controls. And then you come over under motion, scale, and you just increase it or decrease it, no matter how, or how much you, uh, you need to do. Normally it's 100, maybe 120. Around that, you've got a serious problem with your aspect ratio and you're gonna have to start all over again or correct your aspect ratio, which will be a little bit difficult to do. So either one of those two ways will sort your little video out. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I'm gonna be going over different ways you can get rid of a green screen background on Adobe Premiere Pro, so stick around. So an example, I've downloaded a template off Google where it's a green screen with the eyes open and closing from a short film. So what we're going to do, we want to just get rid of this white, ba uh, this green white, this green background I mean. So we can get rid of it, so we can just have the eye open and close. Maybe you've got a green screen of someone against a, uh, a green background. So what we're going to do, come over to effects, and then what we're going to search is ultra key. Now ultra key is what's going to allow us to select the colour and then delete it. So ultra key here, drag it onto your clip and then come over to the top left hand corner on effect controls and then as we can see here we've got the effect right here so what we're going to do, we're going to click this prepare and we're just going to click the green and there we go we've gotten rid of the green and we now have a blinking eye maybe you can, you, you're doing that with like some sort of footage some ones against a uh, green background and you just want them to have no background but on the background. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I'm going to go over a quick, quick way, two ways that you can reduce lag on Adobe Premiere Pro when playing back your footage. Anyway, how do you reduce lag on Premiere Pro? The higher the quality of the footage, the more demanding it is on your PC. So the best way to reduce this is, once you've got your footage in Adobe Premiere Pro, navigate to the top right hand panel, and as you can see here, it says full. What you want to do is click that, and you can see we've got, and we've got half and one fourth. Now you can go down to 1 8th and 1, and 1 16th, but those don't really change much and I don't know why it's grayed out of mine, but 1 4th does the job. So basically what this is, it's the select playback resolution. It shows the preview of your footage as it would look like if it was exploited. So on full is the highest quality settings, the highest quality it can possibly be. Half self explanatory as you go on. Reduces the quality so, you, so your PC can handle it. Now the second way to reduce lag in Adobe Premiere Pro is by rendering. Now rendering is a good way, it take, might take a long time, but it's a good way to fully reduce the lag in Premiere Pro. So what you want to do, click I for in and O for out on different parts of the clips on, on the certain segment that you want to render. Never get up to sequence settings, render into out. And what that's going to do is going to render that on that in and out point. Everything in between those two brackets is going to get rendered. And once it's done, it's going to play back without fail at the highest quality that it possibly can. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I'm going to go over blending mode in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now in order to do this, select your clip and then get up to the top left hand panel and hit, and hit effect controls. And once you've got effect controls, scroll down to opacity. And under opacity you'll see blending mode. Now there's a lot of different blending modes, but the one I use a lot is screen. What screen's going to do, it's going to overlap the two without any, adding any tinting, filter to it. And I've used that in a lot of my work as you can see here. 
but it's a really good way to achieve a really cool effect if you want to double lap a couple of clips. If you can do it uh, unlimited amount of clips if you want it, but I would stick to probably two or three so you don't uh, confuse your viewer. You can mess around with any of the others, but that's that's just the one I like really. And in order to do this, make sure you set the clips on top of each other on channel one, two, three, and four, and five, and Same obviously so on. One thing you want to do is make sure to apply the effect to the top clip so it affects the bottom one. You can't apply this effect to the bottom clip. The top clip has to have the blending mode, the same blending mode, otherwise it's going to look bulky, it's going to look weird. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. If you're new here, my name's Jack Fair and I'm a freelance videographer, photographer and video editor. God, I always stumble over that. Anyway, so today on the channel I'm going to do a quick tutorial on Adobe Premiere Pro, how to do those cinematic black bars. Now you're probably wondering, Jack, you've got a different name, cinematic black bars, uh, telebot, telebox, fucking letterbox, um, black bars, no matter what it is, it's the same bloody thing, you've got black bars on top and bottom of your footage and you probably want to know how to do that, they're doing a lot of action films, Hollywood films, cinematic, cinematic black bars, so let's jump straight to Adobe Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to do it. So once you're inside Premiere Pro, you want to get your clip into your timeline once you've done it and you want to go over to effects in the bottom left hand corner or to the top right or to the top I mean and click effects. Either way works, just different ways to access in the effects panel. So once you've got effects up, we want to go to the search bar and search crop. And once you've searched crop, drag it onto your clip. And once you've uh, dragged it on, click the clip, effect controls, come down to where it says crop, the effect. And what we want to do, we want to pay attention to the top and bottom. That's going to literally crop our video. So what I would recommend for about cinematic black bars is probably 8 to 10%. 8% is pretty decent for good, leaving good headroom. If you don't have a lot of headroom in the video, maybe go down to maybe about 5. It still does the job, but it's not as effective. So I'll leave it about 8 to 10, depending on how much headroom you've got. And then same on the bottom, always keep the value the same. So if it's 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom, 8 on the top, 8 on the bottom, you don't want to have odd looking black bars. So we've got 10 here, we're going to just put in 10. And there we go, we have our own little cinematic black bars as we do, as we do. And then you can colour grade there, you can check out my colour grading video there. I also go over the cinematic black bars in that video just to remind you. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I'm going to show you the basics of transitions within Premiere Pro 2021. Anyway, so how do we apply transitions within Premiere Pro? It's a multitude of different ways. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how. When we're in Premiere Pro, we've got our timeline, as you can probably see, and we want to make a, maybe a cut here, and then we want to join these two clips. Now the basic transition is cross dissolve. So if we go to effects up here, you can have the drop down menu, and here where it says video transitions, click that, and then we have all of these default that Adobe Premiere Pro provides of the transitions. Now all of these are pretty ugly, apart from cross dissolve, which is in dissolve, cross dissolve. Now this is a just a, like a fade to black really, when on its own. So if we get rid of that and we join, say we want to join these two clips together, what we would do is put them together so that it would look like a normal basic cut, but we'd do a drag the cross dissolve or any, or any transition for that matter in the middle, you see here how we can put it on the end of a clip, start of a clip, or in the middle, put it in the middle and it'll join the two clips together. So if we get rid of that and we get about right here, doom, boom, and we cross dissolve here, you'll notice that we do a cross dissolve. Now you can, if we zoom in, we'll get these, uh, this little like razor tool here and we can adjust how long the cross dissolve or the transition is applying for. So if we want it all, we, if we want a long transition, it will start to transition, as you can see, slowly. But if we want a more short and fast transition, we'll put it about maybe that, and it will be a faster transition like that. But I personally don't like this. I like it where it dips to black and then dips back up. But if you want a quick shortcut to this, all you need to do is hit Control D, and it will add it to the start of the clip at the start of the clip and the end of the clip. Now if you don't want it to start the clip, just select it and hit the back key. And same with this one, Control D. And we've got some basic transitions. And of course you can apply different types of transitions, whether fancy transitions, presets that you can download from the web or YouTube videos. 
and apply them to your work. Now the way that you install transitions, custom transitions that is, is by going to preset, right clicking, import presets and then you can download the file from wherever it is, select it, open it and then hit open and then what it'll do, it'll come here and we can see I've got some custom presets that I've downloaded from other YouTubers and other providers. So we've got DJ presets and we've got all of these different transitions. Now if we look at some custom transitions, what you want to do is cut, depending on what the instructions are, cut at certain frames and I've just done a quick presentation here, cut here, cut here and I've dragged swipe first clip, swipe second clip, it, it tells you what to do and if we go ahead and play that a custom cool transition and this can be anything you want but that's just a quick tutorial on how to do transitions and apply them into your work. Hey guys and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you what keyframes are and how to edit with them. Now what are keyframes? Keyframes are used to animate a clip or a value or an effect within Premiere Pro. Now that's probably their sole purpose is to animate, to make things bigger, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to show you how to set up a keyframe and the basics of using keyframes. So let's jump straight into this and I'll show you what to do. So once you've got your clip up in Premiere Pro, what you want to do is... Well, first, first of all, what do you want to do? So let's say I want to make this smaller and then gradually get bigger over time. So at the start of the clip, it'll be at the value 50 and then by the end of it, it'll be full screen. So what I want to do is that I want to click this little, this little timer, this toggle animation. What that's going to do, that's going to create a little uh, keyframe and that's going to create a keyframe. So if we go to the end of the clip, and we change the value back to 100 that's going to create another keyframe and over time my video is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and that's just the basics of keyframes now this can be applied to anything so say I want to make my video go from left to right I would go all the way over here and then click the little stopwatch and go to the end of my clip it doesn't have to be at the end of your clip wherever you want the animation to stop put your playhead there. So for me, I want to put it at the end of my video. So I'm going to change that back. I can just click that little there. And then over the duration of the video, the, that keyframe is going to be executed and my video is going to drag to the end of the screen. So say you don't want to edit the actual clip, you want to edit effects with keyframes. So this could be something with an adjustment layer. If you want to find out more about adjustment layers, hit the little card in the top right hand corner. So we go to new item, adjustment layer, yep, yeah, da 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 da. So we drag that onto the timeline, stretch it out, da 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 da. Maybe you want to make it blurry. So what I would go, go to effects, search blur, and there, where is it, where's blur? Gaussian blur, where are you, Gaussian blur? Drag that on, there we go. The effect is on, but it's not executed. So if I go down to Gaussian blur and change the value to 100, it's now blurry, but Say if I want to make the duration of the clip start, let's say I want to start at the start of the video where it's fully blurred and then say about 30 seconds I want it to be unblurry. So now we're at 30 seconds, I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna again click the little stopwatch, go to around 30 seconds and change the value back to zero. And then what that, that's created two keyframes, one here and then one at the start and then over the duration of that time it's gonna get less and less blurry. And this can be applied to anything you want. So let's say I want to create some moving text. We have our text on the screen, make that enlarged. And let's say over the duration of, let's say five seconds, I want that to get bigger. Let's just um, reframe it and put it in the center of the, uh, of the video. There we go, edit. Da, 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 da. And then back to editing. If I want this, um, this, if I want this text to be getting bigger, over the over five seconds, I can create the little keyframes by hitting the toggle animation, and then going to around five seconds, and then changing the value to whatever I want. If I wanted to double in size, I'd type in 200, not <laughs> not 2,000, 200, and then over five seconds, it would get bigger. Now I've used this multiple times within my work. You can see here. Where well, I used the Gaussian blur and the opacity and the enlargement to recreate this cinematic opening for the National Diversity Awards that was shown in front of 600 people. And that really shows the power of keyframes, whatever you want to do. So, if you want to create an advanced keyframe, 
so it's not just two values, it's got like more than two. So let's say at the start of the video I want to make it blurry again. So we're going to go to effects, search blur, and then get the Gaussian blur effect and then apply that to our clip, there we go. And then we're going to go down to Gaussian blur and then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. What we're going to do, we're going to type in the value 100 or whatever your value you want to be. Click the toggle animation and then let's say I want the animation to the keyframes to stop at five seconds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag my playhead to around around two seconds. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click this little add or remove keyframe. Now this is very important. This creates another keyframe with the same value where your playhead is. So when I click this, it's going to add another keyframe with that same value, which would be 100% blurriness. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to drag my playhead to around three seconds and then I'm going to change the value to I'm then going to click another keyframe but when I get to around five seconds I'm going to change that to zero. So as we can see those keyframes keep it consistent. So as we can see our keyframes here keep the same value but then when it gets to around this one it starts to go down because this has a different value there we go now here's a little quick tip if you drag and select all of your keyframes and right click and hit auto bezier that's going to create a nice smooth motion for your animation instead of it being clunky and looks like it's being rushed so if you select it or right click auto bezier that's going to Soften out and make it smooth, make, a, make your animation smooth and clean. There you go, that looks way more better than what we had before. Hey guys, welcome back to the new video channel. Now this is a bit of a surprise, it's been a couple of weeks since I actually recorded a video. I've had to upload some old videos because I've been so busy in my life. So today what we're going to do, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to loop a video in Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've been up to, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. My name is Jacques Fairley, I'm a freelance videographer, photographer and video editor. Producing weekly content on helping you become a better videographer and video editor. Now if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned and subscribe to their channel. So jumping straight into this, how to loop a video in Adobe Premiere Pro. So taking a little one of my recent works, a club promotional video from the Central of Manchester, that's what I've really been up to, expanding my portfolio. We want to say, we want to loop the first like, like five seconds of this. So if we cut here, right, and then we get rid of that. Say we want to loop this part, so where the where it starts, and then it and then it gets about here, where she puts her head down, and then we want that to loop over and over and over. What we can do, we're going to hit in point and I for in, and then O for out. And what it's going to do is going to set the in and out points here of where you want to do, of where you want it to be. I mean, then we're going to come up to this little wrench here, the settings. Click that, and then you see here. That you've got a loop, you know, click that and it's going to put a check mark to it and then it's going to literally loop the in and out points. Anything that's in between those in and out points, it's going to loop over and over and over for infinity. So we play it now. You can check my promotional video up there if you want to see what I put to. Boom. And it's just looping over and over and over. One more time to show you I'm not lying. There you go. So yeah, if you want to check out this promotional video and check out my Instagram, my work Instagram, I really built that up for the past couple of weeks. It's up there. Anyway guys, that's been Jack Fern. Anyway guys, it's just been a quick little video and a little bit of a catch up on what I've really been doing and um, what I've been, you know, how to, how to loop a video in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you like what you see here, subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos. And if you want to support the channel, go buy me a copy, link in the description. So. Apart from that guys, I'll see you on the next video and I'm back baby. I ain't going anywhere. Some people have been asking me, you know, where have you been Jack? You know, you're still uploading old videos. Are you going to quit YouTube? Oh my hell. I've just been really, really busy. Uh, but yeah, apart from that guys, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.